Welcome to the uh, sessions on the new Indonesian capital. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Arif Hafasugroseno. I'm the Indonesian ambassador to Germany next door. Uh, <laughs> so we are on a German and Swiss German time, so I think we want to uh, try to be as punctual as possible. Uh, I've been invited here to, to, to have some bilaterals, but also uh, to be invited also to, to be a uh, moderator of these uh, important uh, discussions. So uh, this afternoon we have one hour uh, timeline from 1500 to 1600, so we have one hour. And we have uh, three uh, speakers. We have Papa Dr. Bambang Susantono. He is the head of the National Capital Authority of the new Indonesian capital. We have Ibu Dr. Amalia, uh, very good friend of mine. Uh, uh, she is a deputy minister for economic affairs of the Ministry of Development Planning. And of course, we have uh, Yuki Hanafi the Vice Chair of the uh, Indonesian uh, Chamber of uh, Commerce. So in this uh, slot of one hour time, uh, we would very much like to hear uh, from uh, Pak Bambang, from Ibu Amalia, and from Pak Yuki uh, the development uh, of the uh, national, uh, new national capitals. I want to digress a little bit. Uh, in Germany, people ask me about the moving of the capital. I would say we are not moving the capital. We are building a capital. So it's different, different, different idea. And someone also asked me, are you going to move the whole Jakarta? Come on, it's impossible. It's 13 million people. <laughs> we are not going to move the whole Jakarta. We are going to move the government center of uh, Indonesia. And then another, another typical question is, well, in Jakarta sinking, yes and no, because the, the place where I live, in Bajaten, southern Jakarta, the height is 25 meters. Manhattan is 10 meters, average. If you don't believe me, you know, Google it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> People don't move out of Manhattan today. So uh, 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 there are some part of Jakarta that has threats of sinking, but I think others are not necessarily sinking. Uh, uh, as many uh, so-called analysts would say. But uh, anyway, uh, today we hope to get a clearer picture. Today we hope we get a uh, sense of directions where this uh, idea will be come into fruition. And uh, I would like to organize the <coughs> discussion today by first of all having uh, Papa Dr. Bambang Suantono to give a keynote speech. And then uh, Ibu Dr. Amalia, and then Pa um, Yuki. So if you can uh, make yourself around 10 minutes, 12 minutes max, and then we, we, will, we will have a, a, a solid Q&A. And of course, we have a live streaming. So uh, people in Indonesia and anywhere in the world could also uh, have a look at it. So once again, thank you very much. Big applause to Papa Dr. Papa Santon. Thank you, Excellencies, Ambassador. Pleasure to have a moderator uh, as a caliber of him. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a uh, very good afternoon here in Davos. Also, a very good day to those of you who are watching from the streaming, YouTube streaming from the Ministry of Investment. Uh, this is a uh, session on the Indonesian new national capital. I would like to thank first the uh, Ministry of Investment as well as Kadin and also the uh, uh, Embassy of Indonesia for organizing these sessions. Some of you may recall that I was also speaking on this stage in summer last year. Yeah. Back then I introduced the concept of Nusantara to, to the audience and since uh, that day, people kept coming to me and mostly asking three questions. Number one, when will you begin the constructions? So this is around June or July, yeah? June, maybe. Really. June, yeah. So when will you begin the construction? Second one, where are the investors? 
and uh, the very famous uh, or you know repeated questions that I receive is, 2024 is so soon, what will be happening then? So I'll try to do my best to share with you and to try to answer these three questions. Yeah? So first slide. Uh, just to give you ideas, we are, we are not moving, as uh, Ambassador said. We are developing a new capital. And I think my colleague from Bapanas will tell you more. This, this is part of the grand design of Indonesia's transformations in 2045. So it's not a standalone project that only developing a capital there, no. But this meant to be a super hub of the Indonesian economy in 2045 when we ce celebrate our 100 years of independence. Yeah? So I think that's a very important uh, 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 statement from all of us that uh, this is not a standalone program. And um, uh, next slide, you can see uh, this slide. Uh, sorry, go back, go back in. So you know that this is the uh, East Kalimantan area, and um, perhaps uh, this is the very unique situations that uh, we have in Indonesia because mostly if you move the capital or develop the capital, you are at the same land base. This one is different. We are going to another island. Yeah. So, you know, you'll see later on uh, my explanation why we are choosing to develop that one. But uh, I think there are a lot of uh, studies that uh, we did. My two colleagues from Babunas who are sitting here with me, uh, they know exactly uh, the, the studies prior to my, uh, uh, my appointment as the uh, chairman of the national capital, but there are solid reasons why we are moving to that uh, new locations. Next slide. Just to give you ideas that uh, we are developing 256,000 hectares of land, this one. The whole thing is this one. And uh, of the 256, we have the 56,000, uh, this one, the the middle orange, and nowadays we are focusing more on the government core area, the 6,671 hectare. Yeah. But this is the, uh, the whole area that is uh, four times larger than Jakarta, or two times larger than London, I believe, right? or 3.5 times larger than Singapore. But I will tell you more that uh, we are not going to develop the whole things, we are going to preserve 65% of this whole land as a tropical forest. Yeah. So if somebody accusing us of, you know, this will, you know, threat the environment and others, I think the reality will be the different, the opposite direction, because we are going to have the reforestations. Yeah. So I will tell you in the next slide. Okay. So in this area, we are going to have uh, sort of like nine uh, economic generators, we call it. Yeah. Keep in mind that the, the, the brown one is the this core area that we are focusing right now, but uh, each of these, what we call the wilayah perencanaan or the sub-planning area, they have their own teams or characters. I hope everything's safe there. <laughs> okay, so uh, for example, there's an innovation and research. Here is the uh, renewable area. There will be some uh, tourism and also uh, edu, edu town, health town, and others. Uh, here, agro commodities and trade and logistics. There is some fisheries and agricultural uh, industry. So we are going to develop all of them as the uh, economic generators for the 2045. But I would like to emphasize again that right now we are trying to have a showcase in this area, in the uh, government core area. Okay. Next slide. So zoom in, you can see on the far right, on my right right there. So we are zooming in. This is the uh, government core area, about 6,671 hectare. And of that, we are also focusing in this area. Yeah. If you are zooming in here, you'll see in the next uh, slide that we are developing, for example, the palace for the president. And then there are a couple of ministries offices also all the necessity for a good livable cities like health, education, entertainment centers, you know, uh, you know, market, you name it. So we try to have what we call the ecosystem approach. This is new and uh, this is something that uh, we are changing the course uh, when I uh, to, uh, take the job because uh, initially we just want to have uh, 
facilities and also infrastructure. But uh, we changed the uh, approach to have a complete ecosystem, meaning that this will be not only livable city, but we would like to have a lovable city. Yes. Those who are moving there as a pioneer, we would like them to say that, yes, moving is good here. Life is good. Yeah? As opposed to, for example, oh, this is really awful. Oh, this is, there's no, nothing here. So we don't want to hear that one. That's why we, are, we changed the approach to a livable and lovable city. Yeah? Um, just want to uh, emphasize that when we develop a city, we are not talking about five to ten years. You go around, for example, Canberra, Washington DC, or perhaps uh, Nur Sultan in Kazakhstan, yeah? Brasilia city, it takes about 50 or 60 years until maturity. Yeah? And uh, for me, developing a cities like this is not only building the facilities, not only building the infrastructure. The most important thing is to have a soul of the city. The city has to be vibrant. That is why our approach is a livable and a lovable city. Yeah? So, but of course, there are a lot of uh, potential investors asking me, Bama, 2024, we will have a new president. What will be happening? Yeah? So we do our best in 2024 to have some ecosystem that we built that can, have, that can be a showcase for everybody to see that this is an unstoppable city, that this is a self propelling city. Yeah. And uh, as you know, we have a law and regulations that guarantee the sustainable of the city. If you want to change the course, or if you want to uh, try to have a different policy, you have to change the law. And changing the law is not easy. Yeah. Next slide. Just the artist impressions of the uh, uh, government core area. We have five tagline of the city's characters. Number one, this will be the green cities, including you know, how we will mitigate and have some mitigation and adaptation for climate change. Second one, this will be a smart city. Everything will be digitalized. Right? And also uh, that means that also uh, the, the latest technology will be there. Yeah. We do our best to implement those then. And also inclusive, this is a cities for all. Yeah. It's not for those who are a middle income and up, but also those who, you know, uh, on the low income and others that has a right to live there because the, the city, we call it the Indonesian centris as opposed to Jawa centris or Kalimantan centris. This is Indonesian centris. It's a city for all uh, that they being owned by all Indonesian. Has to be resilience. This is very important. The COVID-19 uh, gave us lessons that not only a resilience of the financial and economic shocks, not only resilience about the climate change with all the mitigation and adaptation measures, but also resilience for health and pandemic situations. That is also very important. So uh, we have uh, some roadmap for the resiliency of the, of the city, and we do hope that uh, it's gonna be a very resilient city in the future. And of course, the last one is the sustainable city. Yeah. Next one. This is very important. Again, we are being accused, uh, you know, in the past, having a lot of deforestation. This is different. We are going to reforestation. Yeah. 65% um, uh, of the whole 256,000 will be, you know, convert from the uh, production forest right now, most of them production forest, meaning that if you see on the ground, some, somebody wondering, Bamang, why is it they are still cutting the trees? Because this is production forest. But we are going to have measures to reforestate that kind of situation. Yeah? And for that, we have a one uh, a persemayan, the nursery area, that capable delivering 15 million trees every day, every year, sorry. 15 million, one five million trees every year to convert from the production forest to a tropical forest. So 65% forest, 10% green, and 25% urban built area. And we are going to implement all the uh, latest concept of nature-based solutions, for example. We are combining the green and the gray infrastructure, yeah, using the landscape, for example, using the vegetations uh, to make uh, you know, all the uh, balance between people, nature, and culture. Yeah, and also uh, trying to do our best to have the sponsor city concept.
uh, if you it's like sponge. Uh, there is uh, many of the area we call it the riparian. It's like a small lake that uh, able to conserve the water. And then when we need the water, we can release that water. Yeah. So only 25% will be developed. And we try to control this one, the 25% as a green area. There is no, uh, uh, no vehicles other than green vehicles that allowed in this area. Yeah. So our goal is going to be the carbon neutral city by 2045, ahead of Indonesia, Indonesia 2060. But we in Nusantara would like to have this one. And next slide. And I'm glad to share with you that we launched in the last COP of the Climate Change Conference of Party 27 in uh, Sham el Sheikh in Egypt, a study, hopefully will be delivered this year in COP28, that has the roadmap for this uh, Nusantara to be a uh, carbon neutral by 2045. The study is now going on, and again, we do hope, finger crossed, uh, this COP28 in Abu Dhabi, we are going to announce that, yes, yeah, Nusantara will be the first capital city in the world that has the LDC. Anybody who are not familiar with LDC, locally det determined contributions. At national level, we have NDC, national determined contributions. Usually the country, you know, uh, reported to the, uh, to the world that uh, they are going to have some measures to achieve some targets on the climate change. But for Nusantara, we are going to have the LDC at the city level, locally determined contribution. Okay. Next, just want to uh, update you what is happening right now on the ground. Yeah. Access road is uh, being uh, almost finished, but now it's being also, uh, uh, how you call it, uh, maintained so that uh, we can have a, a good logistic system for those in, especially in 2023, because we are going to have a massive constructions. Yeah, here, this is the dormitory housing compound for the workers. Yeah, we hope that about 20,000 workers will be, at least, yeah, at least 20,000 workers will be uh, 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 working on that area. And one of the, uh, the floor here is my base camp actually. So I have uh, two offices right now, one in Jakarta, Balikpapan, and the third one will be on the ground. Yeah, uh, I will be there, uh, and my two deputies actually already, uh, you know, have the day-to-day uh, -day office there because they have to control all the development. So access road there, and then the ring road there for the logistic and supply chains. Uh, next one. Uh, this is very important because there are so many questions about the uh, availability of water. Our dam has a capacity to uh, supply until 2030. Until 2030, we are safe because of this dam. And this dam is now is, uh, almost finished. We are going to see next month uh, what we call the inundations. The water is coming in until several months so that uh, the dam will be functioning at least at the end of this year. Yeah. There's also water intake there. Uh, uh, just to remind you that the water system in Nusantara will be a potable water. Bisa diminum, you can drink directly. Perhaps this is the first city in Indonesia that uh, able to uh, supply that water. This is the uh, nurseries that I'm talking about that has a capacity of 1.5, 15 million trees every year. Almost completed right now. And then there are a lot of uh, water reservoirs like this because we are uh, uh, implementing the concept of Spawn City. Yeah. Uh, that is on the, uh, that's only on the hard side, but we know exactly that uh, we would like to have a good ESG reputation. Yeah. Nusantara must have an ESG world-class standard, environment, social, and governance. So for the social thing, we are working with so many elements of the society, there's NGOs, CSOs, and others, as well as you know, companies, to have a reskilling and upskilling of the local communities. There are two tracks right now. One track is that for those who would like to be in, involved in the construction industry. So they get some certification, they get some training from uh, many of the universities, also the uh, labor uh, training center, so that they can get certificate and they can be part of the construction process. But for those who would like to have uh, another uh, you know, roles in the future, for example, we call it the Ma'ama program, 
the ibu ibu, the housewife. Uh, they are being training of having, for example, as a barista, coffee, making some bakery, or perhaps uh, uh, tailoring or others, so that they can also part of the development process. Yeah. We don't want them just watching what is happening on the ground. We want them part of the development process. Yeah. Uh, we have one uh, actually uh, digital village, if you Google, uh, in YouTube, there is a Bukit Raya podcast. Even they have a podcast. This is small village. Yeah? But uh, we try to do our best to uh, have uh, some sort of like a, a model for others yeah? so that uh, they will be also have some, a good transformation because this is going to be a smart city. Smart city means that you have to be able to have a, a smart uh, you know, digital kind of uh, capacities for you know, ordinary people, and uh, we start to do our, uh, uh, some training and also some uh, empowerment of uh, like the early kids like this, so that they, are, they will be part also of this transformation. Yeah. Now, where are the investors? Yeah. We receive a lot of, to, to my surprise, this is to my surprise, because uh, I was told by so many people that, oh, 2023 will be a very difficult years and stuff like that. But, you know, we uh, received more than 100 plus plus, right? Now, but uh, we only take into account those who are giving us a good letter of interest. And then from the letter of interest, we are again screening them, the one that really has something to do in 2023 and 2024 as a priority. And, and as of uh, last week or two weeks ago, yeah, there are about this many that uh, giving us the letter of interest, and 25 of them now is on the active sort of like uh, discussion with us to have some uh, real investment on the ground. This is from private sector. Some of the hospital industries, some of the schools industry, some of the mall, for example, or department store. You know the brand of IKEA, for example? Yeah? They are going to invest there. There will be also a good school, like a Jakarta International School, those of you who are familiar with that, they will be also part of that. Uh, big properties uh, company, like Pakuwon, you know, uh, you name it. Uh, they also express some interest. Even there's some uh, football club that would love to be there at the first place. There's also some of them who would like to have a F1E circuit. E, because uh, we don't allow those who are you know, using not uh, you know, green vehicles to be there. So uh, it's very exciting time. For us, it's a high time right now. Yeah? Oh, and uh, I put this 44 times because uh, initially we only want to develop only part of this as a showcase in 2024. And for that, it's only about 1,000 hectare or 921 hectare. And of 921 hectare, there's uh, parcels of land that available, yeah? And when we open that one to the investor, well, we got by surprise that we are oversubscribed by 44 times. Meaning that the uh, request, the demand for parcel of land way exceeding our capacity. At this moment, at this moment, I have to uh, underline that one because uh, those uh, area that we uh, offer is the one that uh, ready, quote unquote, because there will be infrastructure, there will be multi-utility tunnels that are available on that one. Yeah? Next one. So because of that, uh, initially, we only uh, uh, thinking that we are going to have a showcase on 1A. Yeah? But now we open to 1B and 1C, as well, as well as the other surrounding area. So some of them asking for 300 hectares. Some of them asking for 200 hectares. Somebody would like to uh, have some uh, golf course, for example, including all the town, townhouse and the uh, housing complex, they're asking more. Yeah. So we are now in the middle of that with them. And uh, hopefully some of them will be, uh, you can see that by 2024. Yeah. Next one. Mm. This is on the housing tower. We are now very active on the middle of negotiation with uh, three uh, properties company that will uh, develop 184 towers. 
Yeah. 2024, we are going to witness some of the civil servant, military, and also police personnel will move there. Yeah. Well, the number is about 17,000. Yeah. Ramping up to 60,000. Um, we are still opening some area uh, for the private sector who would like also to participate in this uh, public uh, private partnership. This is a PPP uh, scheme. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, again, uh, hopefully we can see on the Q2, the quarter two, that uh, some of them will start the construction. Keep in mind that nowadays, building like this with a new technology of knockdown and modular, it will be a very quick one. Yeah? Next. If uh, any of you would like to invest on the large scale one, this is uh, something that you may think of. Yeah? But perhaps it will not, uh, uh, it will not uh, finish by 2024. This will go beyond that one. There will be some financial center. There will be some fall road between Balikpapan, the nearby cities that now is the gateway uh, for Nusantara. There will be some immersible tunnels that we have to develop on the tunnel, uh, some part of the tunnel. Why? Because we, want, we have to protect the conservation area. That's why the... Uh, Rather than we have the road coming to that area, the road has to go down and under the sea to protect that area. Yeah, this is going to be a bit expensive, but there's ecotourism, wellness, and others that uh, we open for uh, investment in the future. Next. Uh, one more thing that usually being asked by colleagues from investors, what will be the incentive for that? And I'm glad to uh, share with you that I think this week there will be a new government regulations specifically mentioned about the incentive of investor who will invest in Nusantara. There is a specific tax holiday, for example, with a number of years that is very attractive. There will be a super tax deductions for select tax activities and uh, some others. So, so uh, I'll, I'll share in uh, our uh, website. Uh, when the, uh, the time it comes, but uh, I heard that it's, it's already being signed with the president right now. Yeah. Uh, one more thing, um, the authority like us, we are, we are not going to deal directly with the private sectors. We already have this, if you call it state-owned enterprise, but in this case, authority-owned enterprise. Yeah. We have PT Binakarya. This is now is a state-owned enterprise, but we are now uh, you know, uh, taking over this as a 100% authority-owned enterprise, and they are the one that will deal with all the investors. Uh, we, we hear uh, the uh, uh, suggestions from the investor that they are more comfortable doing P2P, doing B2B, rather than doing with a, a government-like you know, uh, institution like us. So hopefully by having this one, <laughs> you're going to have a more smoother, you know, uh, uh, same language, you know, when you, when you have a, a deal or transactions. Yeah. Next one. Okay, uh, just to show you that we try to do our best to have an international standard. Yeah. For the climate change, I already told you that we have assisted by the Asian Development Bank. We have another MOU with the uh, Islamic Development Bank on the Sustainable Development Goal Principle. Uh, we are going to have uh, also with Tony Blair on the Education Town. Yeah, especially on the uh, world-class educations. We have a pilot uh, projects for the uh, advanced uh, uh, autonomous, autonomous vehicles. Uh, I have an MOU to have a sky taxi in 2045. Hopefully I can, I can still see that one, 2045. <laughs> and also a smart city master plan with the uh, USAID. So just to give you that uh, there is also some aligning of uh, international organizations that work with us. So one or two more slides, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> so I go back to my three questions. The first one, when will the construction start? I posed the wrong questions. It's already started, right? As you see from the uh, slides, you can see that this is project on the go. Yeah. So if you want to uh, participate, please do so. Otherwise, you are, you, you are going to be the follower. Yeah. And we are offer subscribe. That's the second one. Where are the investors? They are investors. If you are skeptical about that one, it's fine. Somebody saying that, oh, don't go there because, uh, you know, it's a situation is not good. Yeah? But maybe they say that because they don't want any competition with you. 
right? The reality is that there are aligning of, uh, they are coming investor on this project. And what will happen in 2024? Remember, don't see this as a really, uh, how you call it, a short-term thing, because we are developing this one until 2045. So what will happen in 2024? This one. This is what we call the Plaza Kebangsaan. We are going to see the uh, uh, palace there. The president will have the ceremony in 2024 in the uh, Bukit Bendera. There will be a complex here, a department store on the right, and a state-owned enterprise offices on the left. This is the Titiknol, we call it, uh, the zero point that will be uh, having a new monument. There will be some, you know, jam session of musical things here. There will be a lot of coffee here, yeah, you name it. So that hopefully this is going to be there in 2024. Not there, but here on the... Uh, main avenue of Nusantara. So with that, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end my presentation by offering you that there's some people that only watching at IKN Nusantara. Some people are wondering what is happening there. But I would like many of you to be part of the one that make things happen in Nusantara. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Bambang, a very impressive uh, presentation indeed. Now I would like to invite Ibu uh, Amalia uh, to give her, her speech, maybe 10 minutes, Ibu, and followed by Pak Yuki uh, for the later discussion. Monggo silakan, Ibu. Excellency Pak Hafas Ugroseno, the Ambassador of Indonesia to Germany, and also Pak Bambang Susantono, the chairman of the Indonesian uh, New Capital Authority. Uh, for this one, at this important opportunity, I would like to focus on uh, that the New Capital City, explained by, by Pak Bambang, is actually not a short-term goal, but it is actually as an integral part of the long-term vision of our country, because Indonesia is now, next slide, Indonesia is now transforming our economy because we would like to escape from the middle income trap by 2045. So uh, by 2045, Indonesia really would like to be the high income economy. And for that uh, objective, in slide number four, Indonesia has the six strategies of economic transformation. And if you look at among these six strategies, then new capital city development is actually as a part of Indonesian economic transformation strategy. Uh, so this is what we would like to say that by having the new capital city of Indonesia, that it will be a new prime mover for the Indonesian economic development now and in the future. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, next slide. Indonesia is actually the biggest archipelagic country in the Southeast Asia. And Indonesia is one of the five members of archipelagic South Asia. And Indonesia is actually the country with the biggest number of islands in Southeast Asia with the number of islands, 17,500 islands. So with this geographical condition, then uh, we also, doing the economic transformation which is designed according to the characteristic of our region. Next slide. So what I would like to say to you at this important opportunity that when, when Indonesia would like to have the Indonesian economic transformation strategy, then we have to design uh, a bottom-up approach that we come up from the economic transformation from the region with their own characteristics. Then, for example, East Kalimantan. We're designing the East Kalimantan economic transformation as the new capital city economic super hub with six economic corridors. 
We also now having uh, the Bali Kerti Economic Transformation that would like to design a new Bali era. I'll be explaining to you in another two days in, in 19 about the, the, the transformation of Bali to become a new Bali era. But today we are, we'll be focusing on how is Kalimantan will be the driver of Indonesian economic transformation by creating a new uh, economic super hub. The six clusters that we will be having in East Kalimantan uh, and uh, driven by our new capital city will be one of the important agenda of Indonesia's economic transformation. And now, um, next one, we are now, sorry, before that, uh, after East Kalimantan, Bali, uh, in the next uh, future, we will be having the Capri Island economic transformation with the tagline, the blue jewels of Northern economy of Indonesia. Why is that? Because Capri Island consisted only one province, consisted more than 2,000 islands only in one province. So that will be a different type of economic transformation. But for this is Kalimantan, this also will be a specific design uh, for the economic transformation by having the six economic clusters that I will be explaining later on. Next one. Uh, this is uh, this slide showing you that the new capital city as a part of the economic transformation strategy is also supporting the another strategy of Indonesia's economic transformation by having the new capital city that will will support the creation of digital transformation in Indonesia because you know as Pabama explained that there will be like a digitalized city in our new capital city and also. Uh, new capital city development and its surrounding of the economic uh, uh, activities, it will be a new paradigm as well for the green industry, next generation in, uh, energy and circular economy implementation in that one. And also it will support the goals to become the new engine of economic growth and to balance the economy between the region in Indonesia and become the Indonesia centuries. Not Java centuries, but Indonesia centuries, as Pak Bambang mentioned just now. Next slide. So economic development strategy for our new capital city in East Kalimantan will be to diversify and create a new economic sectors, which is sustainable, green, and with an advanced technological approach and it will be a prime mover not only for economic recovery, because you know the activity during the construction phase in East Kalimantan now is actually really help the recovery process of uh, uh, Indonesian economy after the COVID pandemic. But not only stop for until the economic recovery, the, the activities and the building uh, and also the establishment, the development of, East, uh, of new capital city will be also supporting the economic transformation of Indonesia. Uh, next slide. What is the six clusters that can be uh, the prime mover of Indonesian economic transformation in East Kalimantan? This is actually the vision with a uh, set of six strategies. And then we can mention clean technology industry because we would like to really implement the green economy integrated pharmaceutical industry, sustainable agriculture industry, inclusive ecotourism and health tourism, advanced chemicals, low carbon energy, but not only the six clusters of these economic activities, but it will be also supported by smart city and digital hub, and including the advanced education system in, in that city. If we can go to the slide number 13, uh, therefore, Nusantara economic super hub will act as a domestic value chain, not only a standalone economic activities, but it will be an integral part of the value chain across Indonesian region, and then it will be the new engine of future economic growth, meaning that the economic activities in East Kalimantan will be connected and integrated with the economic activities in the other part region of Indonesia. So with that, I would also like to, this is, next slide. 
This is the details. If you would like to see the details of each economic cluster, you can refer to this slide. Uh, and next slide. This is the places where those economic clusters will be located. Uh, meaning there is like seven places, not only in the central part of the capital city that Papa mentioned, that there will be like R&D and uh, ecotourism, but there is uh, surrounding the capital city, there will be like uh, places for creating new economic activities. What I would like to underline here is that we will not move the economic activities from Jakarta to East Kalimantan. The economic activities in Jakarta will be still there, but we will be creating the new activities of economy in these areas. So meaning that this is the new prime mover, new engine of economic growth, and then it will not moving the activities from the other part of the region, but it will be a complementary of the economic activities that have been created in other parts of Indonesia. Last slide. Next. So uh, the next government support will be always there, especially that the new capital city development will be an integral part of our long-term and medium-term national planning. Uh, and then also, as Pak Bambang mentioned, that the government will not work alone. The government have to be able to collaborate with all stakeholders, not only from the domestic sites, but also from other countries to really welcome to Indonesia, to really together to build our new capital city as a new engine of economic growth in the future. Thank you very much, and I'll stop there. Thank you, Malia. So I would like now to give the floor to Pa Yuki, the Vice Chair of the Indonesian Chamber of Commerce. Ten minutes, Pa. So then after that, uh, I invite all the speakers uh, to sit in front and have a discussion with, with colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Excellency. Pa Bambang, as a chairman of the IKN and Bu. Actually, I just want to tell you a story. Last year's Indonesia Chamber of Commerce changing the constitution, right? Because we have to adapt the, the, the situation now, uh, technology, online, uh, everything. And then one of the writing in our constitution is regarding where's our office. It's right in the capital city. Wow. So everybody is agreeing about that. Right, so uh, because I'm in charging as the five chairman coordinator, especially for the organization legal and information, so I said that we have to still put in our constitution in capital city. So it's a confirm because our constitution is legally is endorsed by also our the president as a capres part. So Kadin Indonesia will be moved also to capital, new capital city. So just give applause. It's hard, especially it's hard for the next, for the next chairman. I have to be office in Kalimantan. But I believe for the future it's good. That's one of, if not, because if the private sector not move there, so I don't believe that Pak Bambang uh, will make the city, not the capital, right? But it's a city. So that is very important to convince and everything. So, Pak Bambang, ladies and gentlemen, so the concept of smart and green city open up a huge opportunity, Pak, for technology company, electric vehicle, renewable energy developer, via capital investment and technology sharing. So, Pak Bambang is already mentioned, also Ibu, yeah, is the project to generate total potential and annual economic value yeah, of up not up, at least 250 billion, right, Pak Bambang, by 2050. So you want to miss that? It's up to us, right? So therefore, investment is surely not opportunity to be missed. For potential investor in the country, we had held several information sessions and the market sounding. We work together with Pak Bambang. Indonesia Chamber of Commerce very close, have discussion, especially my chairman, Pak Arsyad. Over the, of the course 
of 2022, we promote investment in several prior priority sector throughout the world on the B20 Roadshow. So we travel a lot regarding the B20 Roadshow and also including we explaining about the IKN Nusantara. Last October, we held a market sounding session like Pak Bambang also is mentioned already before with the presi our president, Bapak Joko Widodo in the Jakarta Theater with attractive hundreds of invest investors like already mentioned, but school, university, and also uh, uh, hospital, but, right? Hospital, apartment, many things. So it's already stuck. I mean, Kadin uh, will be provide if you need some information and go there directly to uh, IKN, of course, with Pabamba and Ibu. <laughs> Currently, we are approaching multiple investors in the World Economic Forum as well today. Throughout the year, we will also promote this project to investors, and we go on the ASEAN Business Advisory Council Roadshow. So, you know, because this year also Indonesia as the house of the ASEAN, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, attracting investment is one thing, also Pak Bambang mentioned, but realizing it is the whole different game. Through the extensive network of business, association, and regional arm, we have a regional arm in the 34 province. We have also another arm is a 414 in the major area, yeah, Kadin Indonesia, and then we all support for this, can oversee investment in partnership with local enabler that are expert in the field. Kadin also helped investors understand the local regulation and incentives that are available to them so they can maximize their investment in the project. I heard about the incentive because when Pabambang called Pabalil, I was there. So I know exactly. So it's really interesting, but I believe Pabambang will announce once after the president will sign the president degree. We also assume the role on, of an effective communicator and consultant with the government, voicing out how the best structure investment scheme in the city that will attract both domestic and international investors. Most important, investors need assurance, Pak Bambang, then their investment are in the good hand, protect from the both internal and external factor. Actually, I know Pak Bambang since Ten years ago, Pak, as the vice minister, sometimes we ride the motorcycle during the Hari Raya yeah, to check all the route is make it not uh, traffic jam that time, Pak. So when I know that Pak Bambang become a chairman, I'm sure Pak Bambang also will check, but Pak, don't ask me to ride motorcycle again. <laughs> <laughs> the government uh, has also ensured the project will process the percent the chain in administration, Pak. This will surely give more assurance to the investor to put their money in that project. On top, regularly, incentive related to taxation, financing scheme, lately concerned, right will also increase. Investment attractive and can be rapidly mobilized finance toward this project. Incentive and protection aside, it's also important to keep country stable state, but giving the investor sense of security toward investing in Indonesia. So Kadin stand ready for, to support this national project, just like last year's promoting Nusantara project, the international investor. Finally, we are ready for more collaboration with the chief of the National Capital Authority and the Minister of Investment, of course, for the incentive part and the other minister to formulate more attractive investment scheme for this project to success. Thank you. I hope eight minutes pa, is done. <laughs> Please. Thank you very much, Payuki. Uh, nine and a half minutes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I got coffee from you. <laughs> So uh, I would like to invite Pa Babang, Ibu Amalia, and Pa Yuki to sit. And uh, while you are taking, 
the place I would like to invite the uh, colleague uh, to ask questions maybe we have uh, we have 10 minutes exactly so maybe we have one two three questions one I can combine them together any other okay please John Cumbers, I'm the founder and the CEO of SynBio Beta. We are an innovation network for the synthetic biology industry and the bioeconomy, and we run, we run a 3,000 person trade show in Silicon Valley every year. I was pleased to see uh, mention to the bioeconomy on, on your slides and to some biofuels and uh, uh, protein production on your slides and the areas of economic development that you're planning to, to, uh, to, to support. McKinsey calls the bio-revolution the next big thing, the century of biology for the next 100 years and a between four and 30 trillion dollar economic opportunity in 2030 and beyond. So I'm curious, in terms of bioeconomy and biotechnology investment and strategy, what is the bio strategy for this new capital city? Before you answer, Pa, uh, the question to you is, are you coming or not? So I have a, I have a, a, a hidden agenda, actually. <laughs> so my wife is from Kuching in ah, Malaysia, okay. <laughs> not too far away. So I'm already in Borneo once a year, and I would oh, love right. to be involved and bring our conference to, uh, there you go. to the new capital. So you're coming? I'm there. <laughs> All right. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. I think the uh, short answer is we are open to any ideas and innovation for the future. And as you can see, uh, uh, speaking on the Malaysian side, uh, about two weeks ago when the PM came, uh, PM Anwar Ibrahim came to, uh, to us, he, he brought uh, 11 investors that uh, you know, uh, uh, gave us a letter of interest directly in front of the president at the time. This is just to uh, show you that uh, the uh, transformations of the regional development as mentioned by my colleague, Dr. Winnie, goes beyond borders. Because it's not only for the capital city itself, not only for the Kalimantan on the Indonesian side, but also will affect and impact on the whole Kalimantan as well as the regional thing. So, so I think that uh, we can discuss further on that. Uh, uh, I love uh, any innovations for the future. Uh, I told some of you uh, last, last year that we are not thinking outside the box, but we are thinking without the box. <laughs> so there is no box anymore. <laughs> so there is endless opportunity and innovations if you want to try to do something. But of course, we have to do it right. Yeah? Without the box. <laughs> without the box. <laughs> uh, if I can add uh, a little bit more regarding to bioeconomy. Actually, bioeconomy is our future. So we have to really start to think about it, but we start to think in the six clusters of economy in East Kalimantan. If you look at the six clusters, and then we have a cluster of sustainable agri-industry, and then in it we have plant extract, plant-based protein, and also herbal products and nutritional. And we, if you look at the new uh, energy development there, low carbon energy, we have biofuels in it. And then if you look at the uh, cluster of integrated pharmaceuticals, we have biosimilars. So we, are, we, we don't want to stop until the production of uh, active pharmaceutical ingredient from the petrochemicals, but we also would like to look beyond that, and we would like to go further on the biosimilars product. So I think bioeconomy is our uh, future, and not only stop until there in East Kalimantan, we also now developing the blue economy. We have a lot of resources uh, of our biodiversity from oceans that will be a new engine of our economic growth as well. So please come to <laughs> Indonesia. Excellent. Uh, Payuki, you want to add? Very short. Because you are in, I give your, my number to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, any other uh, audience would like to? Please. Silakan, Your slides went, are fantastic, but they went very fast. Okay. So I have just two short questions. How far is the center from the sea? That's the first question. And the second one is, are you going to build a port? Uh, you know, for seagoing vessels, or is this not included in your program? Including the Navy? 
Maybe some submarines. <laughs> <laughs> the ambassador is the expert on the, on the defense and strategy. That's why he always mentioned about that one. Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, we are going to have a... Uh, uh, to, right now, on the very short term, we just use the existing port on Balikpapan and Samarinda. But in the, uh, in the medium term, we would like to have our own supply chains and logistic uh, sort of like a network for that. How far? Right? How far um, let, let me give you about uh, 15 kilometers away, right? Just so, in front. But uh, if you go to the, uh, the uh, Teluk Balikpapan, the Balikpapan Bay, it's much shorter. But this is protected areas because uh, we have the, um, the protected area for the uh, freshwater dolphin. So that is why some part of the toll road has to go immerse tunnel, uh, go under the water, because we want to protect the environment there. So, yeah. Yes, please. Yes, my name is Thomas Lemmer. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, real estate and uh, infrastructure, built infrastructure accounts for roughly 40% of the CO2 emissions worldwide. And uh, so if you start with a green forest city, do you have any plan to use, let's say, building materials, uh, reduce CO2? Do you have a program? Do you have like uh, legislation around it? Uh, you're thinking ahead because this is something that is now, you know, influenced a lot of mega projects in the world, like Saudi Arabia is doing that. Mm. Like they have full teams and not doing anything else. Are you starting to think in this as well? Or have you done everything in this regard to look at, let's say, net zero concrete or other solutions? Uh, a short answer is yes. Uh, we want every building in that uh, our capital city, the new capital, will green certificate, have a green building certificate from the beginning. Well. So um, I think that uh, right now, the one that will is uh, starting to develop things like that, they are shopping around because uh, there are a couple of state-owned enterprises that are now is uh, doing some construction. They're shopping around to have a, a new technology that has uh, low emissions like uh, yourself, uh, very carbon friendly, for example. And this is uh, also using a digital technology like the BIM, Building Information Management System. So all the good things, hopefully, inshallah, will be there. So you will achieve net zero in 2030, not in 2045, to be honest. Finger cr uh, <laughs> <laughs> For some part of that, yes. But uh, we have to uh, really, uh, we call it, I want to make a glory for the Indonesian Borneo tropical forest. Yes. Because for some times, we always being accused yeah. of having deforestation. Now it's time for us to show them that it's manageable. It will be uh, monitored by the international organizations, certified, of course, we are not uh, alone for this. And uh, I'm very glad that I'm having a lot of uh, international organizations aligning behind us. Very nice, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, two more minutes, any other uh, audience would like to have questions or not? So if not, um, let me just add a little bit, Pak uh, Bambang, and also what your question about the oceans. Because just right in front of the new capital, there is the famous Makassar Strait. And that strait uh, has one archipelagic sealant passages. So all vessels uh, coming from the Indian Oceans going to Japan, if they don't want to go through South China Sea, which is very peaceful, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can go through this channel, all right? So uh, that's number one. Number two, I think in the slides, number 11 and 12, uh, there were pictures of the production forest. Uh, I've, I've looked at it and I think, I think the idea to change production forest into reforested proper tropical forest is something that is a great idea that, that, that uh, I think it's, it's something that's remarkable for this project. So um, once again, uh, thank you very much for all the speakers, for Pak Bambang. Uh, I would like to invite you, Pak Bambang, to come to Hanover next April. Indonesia will be the partner country of Hanover Mesa. 2023 is the largest digital industrial exhibition in the world. Normally, 200,000 people came. So when you're there, I'll try to get at least 50,000. 
Thank you very much.